Yo, what is going on guys? Bobby here and today we are going to be making another Brawl Stars meta tier list. Now with ladder changing, who knows when, people have been trying to get their first rank 35 as well as Worlds is coming up so people just want to know what the meta is. So we're going to be making the nicest, cleanest, best ranking we have ever done yet. Now this order is pretty weird but we're just going to go with it. Starting off with M's, we are going to put M's into the B tier. I feel like M's is really good right now. Any brawler with a knockback is insane, and she also has a good super and good attack damage. She's a really good mid-range, her pierce is really good, and I don't have too many bad things about her. She is going to go right into the B tier, along with our boy, Sprout. Now, Sprout is a really good thrower, but only in knockout and in bounty. You don't really see him too often in brawl ball or hot zone maps like that because there's just too many high HP and fast moving brawlers for Sprout to deal with. But Sprout is just so good in knockout and bounty that he has to be at least B. Coming in next we have Rosa and Rosa is a really weird one because I myself am really good with Rosa so I find myself overrating her a little bit more than I should but I think she is going to be at most C tier right now. I don't really know why she's so low because to me at least she feels pretty good, but I think it's just because she doesn't have a dynamic attack. She doesn't do too much damage. It's kind of just hitting people for like 700 or something. You know what? I'm not going to come into peer pressure. She's at least B, B tier for me. I'm sorry. The super is good. She attacks for enough damage. She's fast in the bushes. She gets super by being hit. The hyper charge is really good. Like Rose is at least B tier. Coming in with our first non-B tier brawler, we have Penny, and Penny's going to go right into the A tier. Now, Penny is a low A tier brawler. Like, she's not very high A tier. In fact, she could honestly also be B tier, but I'm sick of B tier brawlers. The little bit less range was a perfect buff for Penny because Penny has the barrel. Penny has knockback turret, depending on if you're facing a Mortis or a Buzz and you need it. But now she has the range to compete with long range brawlers and I just love what they did to Penny. She's a very all around well-rounded brawler and I just love her right now. Easy A tier. Next brawler we got is Crow and Crow is also going to go right into the A tier. I mean Crow counters all mid range brawlers and all tanks. As long as those mid range brawlers don't have spawnables, Crow isn't really too good into that. On top of that, Crow is just an absolute demon on heist. He could honestly be the best heist brawler in the game right now, probably outside of Colt. But the hypercharge just does insane damage to the safe. It's nothing that you can ignore. And Crow is back where he deserves at the top of the meta where he always should be. And you know what? Since we are talking about the top of the meta and Crow and legendary brawlers, I'm going to go a little bit out of order and I'm going to talk about Spike. And Spike is in the D tier, but like, man, Spike has been bad for a really long time and he definitely needs a buff. The mythic gear that Spike has is really good, but like, bro definitely needs some type of buff because he's just not good enough. He doesn't do nearly as much damage as all the other anti-tanks. He needs more range. That's definitely what Spike needs. He just needs to get too close to hit those shots, and that's not okay. We definitely have to give Spike a little bit more range, I think. Coming in next, we have Poco, and Poco's going to go into the, uh, to the B tier. He's a really good healer. The hypercharge is really good, and sometimes you just have too much HP that the other team can't even handle it. So Poco's going to be a B tier brawler for me. Coming in next, we have Hank, and honestly, guys... Congratulations, Hank. You have moved above the F tier and you are now as high as you've ever been in the D tier. Guys, Hank is actually playable. Now, I know a lot of Spen LC watchers may think Hank is S tier and I know just about everyone else may think Hank is F tier. But I actually think Hank is pretty playable right now and the fact that you do 4,000 a shot, the fact that you heal from your super, there's actually some things you can do with Hank. So I know this sounds a little bit troll, but he's not going to be F tier. He's going to be right in D for me. Next up, we have 8-Bit, and 8-Bit's going to be our first tier C brawler. Now, 8-Bit used to be really good as a gem mid and on heist for damage, and I'm still going to give 8-Bit credit for being a good gem mid, but he's like kind of unusable in heist right now. Like, you can use 8-Bit, but Colette just shreds 8-Bit. Piper and Bell absolutely destroy 8-Bit, and there's just so many brawlers such as Crow, for example, where one hypercharge can just do 40%, where being slow all game like 8-bit just doesn't pay off when you finally get on safe anymore. Next up, we have Bo, and Bo's going to be another C-tier brawler. I mean, the mines are really good, but that's just about it. Bo kind of reminds me of Penny, where he's very well-rounded and just needs a tiny, tiny, tiny buff to get back into meta, but I don't want that because you guys know how I am with Bo mines, so let's just keep bro how he is. Next up, we have Frank. Frank is really simple. Frank got a pretty big nerf, but I mean, he's still really good. We're going to put him into the A tier because he's one of the best tanks. I think he's probably the second 
best tank right now, just a little bit short of Daryl. But that's hard to beat because Daryl literally has two rolls and he's like God right now. So I don't know. We we can't put Frank above Daryl. But Frank is still really good. Bro got way too much HP to be ranked anything below A. And the fact that when you get him low, he still hits so hard and so fast. I mean, you can't rank him anywhere below A. Next up, we have Lou. And Lou is going to go into the C tier. I mean, he could also be... D tier, but I think he is a way better anti-tank than Spike. I mean, compare Spike Super and Lu Super. And Lu Super is 10 times better, and then you compare Spike's hypercharge to Lu's hypercharge, and again, Lu's is 10 times better, but they're the same type of super. And it's just, Lu's just easy. I don't know. There's no reason Lu shouldn't be C. Just don't play him in Bounty or in Knockout, and you should be fine. Next up, we have Kenji, and we're gonna put Kenji straight into the S tier. I mean, this is a no-brainer. Kenji's insane easiest S tier ever. Next up, we have Chester. And again, Chester, pretty no-brainer. We're going to put him into the A tier. Just one of the best anti-tanks in the game right now. He's very solid. He does a lot of damage, and he has a surprising amount of range. So he's the GOAT. He will be getting A tier. Next up, Piper, and exact same thing. Piper is an absolute demon right now. She does a lot of damage, has a lot of range. She is queen as a gem mid. She is queen on knockout, queen on bounty. She's just so good, and... Any map with range, Piper's going to be meta on, so we're going to give her the A tier. Next up, we have Carl, and Carl's in a really weird place right now. I'm going to give Carl the benefit of the doubt and give him C tier, but there's just a lot of stuns and a lot of hyper charges, and Carl doesn't have any of that, and Carl's very weak into that. So we're, we'll give him C because the flying hook gadget is just that good, but only C tier for now, and he could honestly be D. Next up, we have Pam, and I miss Pam being meta. I really do, but same thing. D tier for Pam. She just fell off. She's really good in hot zone when she's good, but she's not good enough right now for her to even be really played there unless she has a perfect matchup. So D tier, you know, Pam just really needs a buff or a hypercharge. Now we have Byron and Byron is going to sneak into the S tier. I'm going to make sure he's the very bottom of the S tier, but he is S tier. I mean, there's just a lot of versatility with Byron. Both star powers are good. Both gadgets are good. How easy it is for you to change supers is really, really, really good. And the fact that the super is kind of like a thrower mechanic where you could throw the shot over walls is also like a very hidden layer to, By to Byron that like most people just don't really understand. Like the super is a thrower shot. It's like what a Barley does or a Sprout does or a Larry does. And the fact that you can just throw that over walls and auto aim it is insane because it hits every single time. Next up, we have Edgar and Edgar is going to go into the S tier. I'm lying. Edgar is a D tier brawler. I mean, the hyper charge is really good. And the fact that you can assassinate some brawlers are really good. But Edgar really falls off once you get above gold in ranked or above 500 trophies on ladder. I mean, once people understand how stuns work and to stay far away and not to just walk up to an Edgar... It's like, what do you really do besides put the thumbs down pin? Next up, we have the two dimension brawlers, actually, funny enough. We're going to put Cord in B tier, but Cord is really good. I mean, the fact that you don't allow the brawler you take into the dimension to get supercharge is really insane. Because for a lot of brawlers, let's take Frank or Rosa as example. Even if you die, you're getting hit so much that you're getting your super. But that's just not the case with Cord, and you can really isolate a brawler and make him or her totally useless over the course of a game not to mention he's one of the very few brawlers in the game that counter both tanks and throwers i mean court is just a really good pick and really really solid next up we have lily and a lot of people don't give lily the appreciation that she deserves but we're gonna put her right beside cord in the b tier as well Lily's just really good, especially if you spam those gadgets and get them out as fast as possible. If you're facing brawlers, you counter, it's like a free win. But even if you get countered, you can kind of just spam those gadgets and see what you can do. And sometimes you can even win. Next up, we have Gene. And I feel like this is as low as Gene usually gets. But we're going to put Gene in the B tier. Just not the greatest right now. He doesn't do enough damage. And I wish I love Gene so much that I wish his hypercharge was something else. I was kind of thinking about this, guys. Do you think if Gene and Bell swapped hypercharges, that would be cool? Because I feel like that would help both brawlers out a lot. I don't know. Let me know what you guys think. But B just or Gene, sorry, just feels like he's in a really weird spot right now. Next up, we have Clancy the Crab. And Clancy is a really, really, really good brawler. We're going to put Clancy into the A tier. Because once Clancy gets tier 3, you lose. It's as simple as that. Especially if it's like Brawl Ball or Hot Zone or Gem Grab where it comes down to the end and it gets even like you just lose because he's just too fast, 
does too much damage, the shot is too easy to hit, and the super is too strong. So, yes, you can play poorly with Clancy if you get stuck at level 1, just like Surge, but Clancy is just so good. He's at least A tier. He's insane. Next up, we have Kit, and Kit is a really versatile brawler. Really good. You can play Kit on a lot of different modes in a lot of different ways, so we're going to put him B tier. I think, honestly, if you're a good Kit, he can go all the way up to S, but then if you suck with Kit, he can go all the way down to even F. Like, Kit is, is a brawler that takes a lot of skill, even though the general consensus is like you can play him in showdown or you can jump on a monkey's back in knockout and just do some cheese strategy. If you're not doing that, then he's very skilled. If you are doing that, obviously he's the most no skill brawler in the game. So I don't want you guys to take me out of context, but there's a big skill cap with Kit to be honest. And I like him, so he's going to go B tier. Next up, Melody. Melody's the same thing, but we're going to put Melody into the A tier because the skill cap is really high. And I think Melody is just such a game breaker on Heist. Like, Mel like the whole game can kind of revolve around Melody. So that's why I want to put her in the A tier because she does deserve that respect. Next up, we have Tick. And Tick is going to be B tier, but I would like to put Tick in the A tier. The only reason I have Tick in B tier is because Larry exists. And Larry is just such a good brawler. Like, such, such a good brawler. If Larry didn't exist, I would say Tick is probably the best anti-tank thrower, if that makes sense. Because usually throwers are very easy to kill by tanks and assassins. Like, imagine an Edgar against every single one of these throwers. At least Tick has a Tick head and a knockback, you know? So there is some play that you can make with Tick into the brawlers that it does get countered by. But he's just not as strong as the meta thrower, so we're going to have to leave him in B right now. Next up, we have Primo. And Primo is a D-tier brawler, but we're going to put him in C-tier specifically because of Brawl Ball. I mean, Primo is just that guy in Brawl Ball, so it's hard not to put him in the C-tier. But that's about all I have to say, because besides that, Primo sucks. Next up, we have Eve. And Eve is going to go into the D-tier. Eve is just not good right now. Like, we get it. Eve can walk on water. But that's about all Eve can do, so D-tier for now. Next up, we have RT. And now this might be a little bit controversial. I don't think it's going to be after World Finals. We're going to put RT into the S tier. Now, two reasons why I want RT in S tier. Number one, the mark is broken. Like the fact that you can mark someone and no matter what, even if it's a tiny gene shot, they take so much damage is very important. It's kind of like being bell marked a little bit. And it's not like you have to 1v1 someone on RT. Like you can mark someone and then completely ignore that player and just go and mark someone else and get a ton of value. But the reason RT is so good is because you can go into that little like double Jackie form and he's just insane and does so much damage and can tank so many shots. He's a very high skill brawler and you could play him in Brawl Ball. You could play him in Knockout and Bounty. Like he's meta in both of those and there's very few brawlers that are actually meta in both of those. I think the pro players at Worlds are going to show you guys just how good RT is. And I don't really have anything more to say about him. Next up, we have Grom. And Grom is going to be C tier. I mean, he's a demon in Bounty and a demon in Knockout. And honestly, you can even play Grom in Brawl Ball. Because he's kind of good for scoring goals and breaking walls. But I don't love him there. He's, you know, a good thrower at Endgame and Knockout because of how good his Grom Bomb is. That's really the only place I really like Grom. So we're giving him a little bit of respect, making him C instead of D, but he's somewhere around that area. Next up, we have Barley, and we're going to put Barley at the very top of the A tier. Barley is a very meta thrower right now who is very good into just about everything besides Assassins. The hypercharge is absolutely insane, and the heal gadget is absolutely insane. So you just get a lot of value out of Barley, which is really nice. And same thing for Larry. We're going to put Larry at the very top of the A tier. I just don't think... There's a thrower right now that's worthy of S tier because the meta is just too many hypercharges and too many, you know, high HP brawlers. But both of these are two of the very top notch brawlers in the game. And if you're upgrading either of these, it's a very good choice. Let me just add that the difference between Larry and Barley is Larry has a very good basic attack and the bot is really annoying. Whereas Barley has a semi-decent basic attack, but both the star power the gadget, and even the hypercharge is just insane on Barley. Next up, we have Ash. And guys, this is the last tier list. I promise you that Ash is going to be ranked this low, but we're putting Ash into the D tier. I'm just waiting for that Ash hypercharge. And I know once that Ash hypercharge comes out, he is going right up to S tier. You heard it here first. There are some brawlers that are just really good with hypercharges. And Ash is going to be one of them you guys are going to see. Next up, we have Mortis. And guys, like, I'm really not promoting you guys to play Mortis with randoms on Heist or something. 
but Mortis is going to go into the A tier. Mortis' hyper is so good, and he is as good as he's ever been. So honestly, guys, don't kill me for saying this, but if you're ever going to play Mortis, right now is the time. Next up, we have Chuck, and Chuck is going to go in the D tier. Usually, we give Chuck a little bit of respect just for the fact that he's so good on Heist, but honestly, he's not that good on Heist anymore. Like, he is good, don't get me wrong, but there's a lot of brawlers like Colette, like Colt, like Melody, like Crow, like Barley, just, just to name a couple, who if they get on safe for five seconds will do more damage than a Chuck over the span of a minute. So yeah, Chuck is really good, but he's only good at safe damage. He's not good for winning lane. He's not good for getting any kills. And to be honest, he's kind of like falling off every single time there's a meta shift in Heist. Next up, we have Belle, and Belle is a really good brawler, but we're going to put her at the top of the B tier simply because she doesn't specialize in anything. Like anti-tanks there's better options such as b i think or just normal anti-tanks like surge range there's better options like angelo piper or nani but she's just like good at everything she does counter tanks she does have a good super she does have good gadgets she does have good range so sure we're gonna give her the higher tier of b i wish she could be higher but unfortunately right now she's not next up we have amber and i know this is kind of crazy for you guys to believe but amber is actually a s tier brawler and honestly now that i'm looking at the s tier brawlers the top four brawlers in the game larry i guess barley is a hypercharge but penny as well like these brawlers don't have hypercharges so when they do they're going to be scary but amber is one of those brawlers that i've been saying for like i don't know five tier lists now that once she gets a hypercharge is easily going to be the best brawler in the game. She has consistently been so good without a hypercharge that I just know once that hypercharge drops, Amber is going to be just unreal. Now, Barry is a very controversial brawler right now, but I'm going to give him the bottom of A tier. Now, a lot of you guys are curious, like, why did Barry fall off so much? It's because of Larry and Barley. Like, Larry and Barley and even Dinah, like, just absolutely poop on Barry's face. Barry shouldn't be played as a thrower, even though he is a thrower. He should be played more as a healer. And the issue is when you're playing Barry and you're going up against a Barley or a Larry, there's nobody that can contest with that Barley or Larry. Barry just doesn't do enough damage. And the fact that Barry heals just charges Barley's hypercharge, charges Larry's bot, and it just becomes way too much for the Barry to deal with. Now I will say though, Barry is still a really good brawler just when not facing Barley, Larry, and Dinah. So if you find yourself as the only thrower, or if you're Barry facing like a Sprout or a Grom or a Tick, then you're gonna do really, really well. Next up, we have Charlie, and Charlie's gonna go in the D tier, just not like good at anything right now. And I really like Charlie meta, but Charlie's just not good right now, and I can't give her the respect that I would like to. She needs a buff badly. Next up, we have Bull, and same thing, Bull, Needs a buff. The hypercharge is good, but he's very one-dimensional. He's really only good in heist and decent as a brawl ball goal scorer, but really only good in heist. So D tier is where he's going to be. Next up, we have Sam, and Sam is kind of creeping back up. I mean, Sam is a really high skill cap brawler. I know a lot of you guys may not believe that just because it's like throw a glove, go pick it up, throw a glove, go pick it up. But you could be really 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 dangerous with sam if you know how to play him properly so definitely c tier next up we have janet and janet's gonna go in the bottom of d tier janet again just needs something like penny just a small buff that gets her back into the meta and then she's gonna be perfectly fine now we have bonnie and i know you guys just love bonnie but you know what i'm gonna change the name of this tier and i'm gonna name it bonnie and guess who gets to go in there Bonnie! I mean, again, guys, she's just not good right now. And every time I make a tier list, I it, like someone sends me some link on Reddit and they're like, Bobby BS made the worst tier list possible. And it's like, okay, how about you come play professional Brawl Stars and you try playing Bonnie? Because if you play Bonnie, every tank is going to run you down. Every range is going to clap your cheeks. Every hypercharged brawler is going to get a hundred times more value than you ever will on Bonnie. Bonnie is just not good right now if you are playing above 11 year old ranks. So people on Reddit who are going to talk bad about this Bonnie placement, do it all you want because this is where Bonnie honestly deserves to go. Next up, we have Mr. P and Mr. P could use a slight buff, although I'm not too annoyed by it. We're going to put him in the D tier. His spawnables are really annoying. And if they wanted Mr. P to be meta, they would just have to make those spawnables a little, little bit more annoying. But right now, again, there's just too many 
high damage, pierce, crazy brawlers that Mr. P just can't keep up with. Next up, we have Leon, and Leon is going to go into this weird uncharted territory in C. And if you guys look at all the brawlers in C, like Sam, Primo, Grom, Carl, Lou, Bo, and 8-Bit, and I guess now Leon, all of these can make plays that can win you a game. But all of these are more likely than not also going to have three or four bad games before they have one good game and Leon is no exception. The only thing I do really like about Leon though is he's very, very well rounded. So you can play him in basically every single mode. Next up we have Shelly and Shelly's actually pretty good right now. I'm gonna give Shelly B tier. The reason I'm giving Shelly B tier is because she's actually sneaky good in knockout as like an anti-tank. Like no one can run at you if you have Shelly and then you can just wait for end game Use your super. If you have the slow one, well, then they're slowed and they can't move. And if you have Band-Aid, well, then you have a lot of HP and you're just really good at endgame. So honestly, really good in Brawl Ball, really good tank counter, really good at the end of knockout. I really like Shelly right now, B tier. Next up, we have Max. And you guys know, Max is just like a constant A tier brawler. Kind of like Gene, where the lowest Max is ever going to go is probably B. Just because the hypercharge is so good, the support is so good, the fact that you can always give your teammates speed is so good. Like, Max is just an insane brawler, and he's always going to be ranked high. Next up, we have Gray, and we're going to put Gray into that weird C tier, where again, you can, have a, you can have crazy games with Gray, and Knockout, Bounty, even in Brawl Ball with crazy goals, Gem Grab to go get the gems. Even Hot Zone as like a weird, you know, teleporting brawler into the zone. But, you know, he just has that one single shot, he doesn't have a hypercharge yet. And, you know, the star powers and the gadgets besides the hook aren't really that useful. So he's going to be a C-tier brawler for me. Next up, we have Mandy. And I have no idea where to put Mandy. Like, I don't know if Mandy is bugged. I don't know if Mandy is fixed. I don't know if Mandy got buffed. I don't know if Mandy even got nerfed. Like, I, like someone, I know I'm a pro player, but I couldn't even tell you what happened to Mandy. So I'm just going to put Mandy in the C-tier because she's so good at range. She is very dangerous on knockout and bounty. But I just don't know where to put Mandy because I have no idea what happened after that recent, you know, just change. Now, apparently, it looks like we have Doug. And Doug is going to go into the Bonnie tier, but we're just going to keep it as the Bonnie tier. I just made a video on this. Doug is the worst brawler of all time. Doug is not moving above this. This is where Doug is going to be. And it's just going to be like this. Next up, we have Colette. And I'm going to put Colette into the A tier. She's a very, very, very good anti-tank and very dangerous on Heist. Very good on Brawl Ball and very good on Hot Zone. The reason I have her A and she can honestly be higher is because this dude, Crow, exists. A lot of the time where you see Colette in a game, it's because Crow is banned. And if Crow is in play, you just can't pick Colette. So we're going to keep Colette in the A tier. But she's very strong, especially when Colette, uh, when Crow sorry, isn't in the mix. Next up, we have Angelo. And Angelo, I'm going to put into the S tier. Like Angelo is a little bit underwhelming, but as snipers go... Angelo is about as good as it's ever going to get. I mean, the super is really nice with the kit. The fact that you have that poison damage, the fact that you can walk on water and do that much damage from that far is insane. Both star powers are really good. The jump away gadget allows you to obviously, you know, jump away. And the pierce gadget is honestly also just insane. So take your pick, play Angelo however you want to play. But I mean, wow, Angelo is one of the best range brawlers we've ever seen. Next up, we have Mo. And honestly, guys, Mo is a rat. I hate Mo. Mo sucks. He doesn't actually suck. He's an S tier brawler, but like, bro is such a rat. Like, I just hate playing Mo. I hate facing Mo. I hate everything about Mo. They need to remove Mo from the game, honestly. Next up, we have Rico. And honestly, I'm going to show Rico some love. Rico is a S tier brawler. On every map where Rico is meta, Rico is absolutely probably the best brawler there. And he's good on a bunch of different modes. It just matters really if the map is open or if it has a lot of walls for Rico to work with. But he shreds tanks, he shreds mid-ranges, Rico's an absolute beast, the speed star power is good, the hypercharge is insane, like I have only good things to say about Rico. Next up we have Nita, and we're gonna put Nita into the B tier. Nita reminds me of M's, just you know, classic mid-range, anti-tank, decent hypercharge, nothing too crazy, but I do love Nita for heist. Nita's an absolute beast with that hyper bear. And honestly, as a tank counter, if you can get that bear up, like, wow, it's just insane. Now we have Squeak, and Squeak is an interesting brawler for sure, but I'm honestly going to put Bro into the B tier as well. Some people have him A, and some people have him as low as D. But I feel like B is a fair place, because the thing with Squeak is you do have to hit shots at the end of the day. If you miss a bunch of shots in a row, you're just going to lose because you're not doing anything else. The thing with a brawler like Nita or a brawler like Cord or Shelly, 
is even if you're missing shots, Brawlers are afraid to run into you because of the damage you do and the super you're going to charge. Brawlers are not afraid to run into Squeak. So if you're missing those shots, you're absolutely useless and you're not doing anything. But if you're hitting the shots and, you know, clapping those choke points, chaining those supers, using your gadgets really well, Squeak is insane. So B tier is a nice little medium. Now we have Jesse and Jesse, exact same thing. I'm going to put Jesse in the B tier. She can be played as a mid, can be played on hot zone, can even be played in Brawl Ball. And she's actually surprisingly good as a damage dealer on Heist. So I'm okay with Jesse and B. Next up, we have Miko the Monkey. And Bro is a little bit dangerous, but not dangerous enough. So he's going to go into the D tier. The thing with Miko that's just weird is you're really good, I guess, at getting kills. But you're not good at anything else. So, like, imagine there's a Larry bot on the field. Like, what are you even going to do into that bot? Or imagine there's just, a like, if you're not going specifically for one single brawler for a kill, Miko is useless. That's all I'm going to say. Next up, we have Fang. And Fang, he, I don't know what happened to Fang. Fang just fell off. But we're going to put Fang into the D tier because we still respect Bro. He could still, you know, team wipe and do something crazy. You see him a lot in, like, silver, gold, and diamond in ranked or at very low trophies. But once you hit Mythic, Legendary, and Masters or like 700 plus trophies, there's really just no Fang because he just doesn't do enough. Guys, Buster's next, but I honestly lost him. I put him somewhere on the tier list and I could, oh, there he is. He's B, but he's really A. He's one of those brawlers that are just one of the best brawlers in the game that don't have hypercharges. And when he does get one, he's gonna take over the meta and be insane. He's just so well-rounded. The pull gadget is insane. The shield is insane. The fact that you pierce is, in is insane. The fact that you get super just by standing near your teammates is insane. Like, there's just a lot of good about Buster, and he's definitely an A-tier brawler. Next up, Macy. And Macy's buff was really weird. Like, I'm literally scratching my head right now because I don't know where to put Macy. But we'll put her into the C-tier. Oh, I put her B by accident. Into the C-tier because, I mean, she just does good damage, and I'm normally a Macy hater. But Macy's super is really good. Macy's hypercharge is really good. And she kind of feels like she's back a little bit. So try her out and let me know what you guys think. Next up, Otis. And we're going to put Otis into the C tier. Otis is going to be C only because he counters Kenji really hard. But besides that, I don't really love where Otis is at. I feel like, again, Otis is going to be a really strong hypercharge brawler. But until then, we're just going to have to wait and see. Next up is Colt. And Colt is just a demon right now. He does so much damage. Like, Colt is the best brawler in heist by a mile. And just for that, I'm going to have to put him in B tier. Like, you can just ignore people, go to a safe with Colt, do 40% in, like, 10 seconds. You can shred tanks. You have decent range. Like, Colt is honestly really good. And he is going to deserve that B tier. He's also really good in Brawl Ball as well. Now we have Tara. And I was reviewing Spen LC's list because I think Spen makes really good tier lists. But the one brawler that Spen definitely got wrong was Tara. He put her in the S, but Tara is at least A tier right now. The fact that Tara has a hypercharge that can break open an entire map is insane. Spamming the gadgets is so back with Tara right now with the amount of brawlers that can't pierce at the moment and with the amount of aggro such as Mortis or Daryl or Frank, for example. Tara is just so back. You can chain supers really easily. And I only have good things to say about Tara. She's a demon right now. Hot zone, brawl ball, gem grab. And even Heist, to be honest, she's pretty good. So definitely try her out right now. Now we have Griff, and Griff is going to go into the C tier. Don't have much to say about Griff. He just feels very bleh right now, very average. You know, not too much going on with Griff. So C tier for now, but I do like him as a brawler. Hope he moves up. Next up, we have BB, and BB is very strong right now. BB is actually very sneaky strong. She does a lot of damage in Heist. She's very good in Brawl Ball, and she's actually pretty good in Hot Zone. So actually give BB a shot if you like BB right now, because BB is just very dangerous. Now we have Buzz, and exact same thing. Buzz is going to go right into the B tier with BB. Just a very good tank. Does a lot right now. The hypercharges on both these brawlers are both amazing. And both are just honestly really fun to play as well. So good and fun can only lead to good things. Next up, Sandy. And Sandy, just like Max and just like Gene, feels like... He has a little bit of a floor, and A right now is going to be the floor. The stun is too good, the hypercharge is too good, the super is too good. There's just too much that's too good about Sandy right now for him to be anywhere but the A tier. Now we have Gus, and this might be a little bit of an unpopular opinion because a lot of people have been waiting for Gus to become meta, but I still feel like Gus is B tier. Now why B instead of A? Well, because of these reasons. A lot of snipers are a lot better, such as RT, Angelo, Byron... And Piper. Gus also gets countered by throwers such as Larry, Barry, 
Barley. And Gus isn't good into spawnables, such as Jesse turrets, Nita bears, RT's Jackie form, 8-bit turret. Like, there's just too many things that I think Gus isn't good enough into right now for Gus to be meta. With that being said, though, I do like Gus, and I do like brawlers like Byron and Gus, where there's a lot of, like, flexibility and a lot of different things you can do. So I hope Gus does move up, but bottom of B tier for me right now. Now we have Dinah, and Dinah's also going to be B tier. I mean, Dinah is just really insane right now when it comes to damage and heist, when it comes to just facing any other thrower, specifically Barry. And the stuns are always going to be good. Like, if you get stunned, then the Dinah's going to start chaining supers, and it's going to get that hypercharge, and it's going to start chaining hypercharge. Like, Dinah's just very dangerous. So definitely B tier right now. Next up, we have Meg, and Meg had, like, a really weird fall off. We're going to give her C for now because I honestly don't really know what to do with Meg. But they made Meg like mutation Meg, which was good. I think that was a really nice change. But then they really nerfed her and they basically made her like an extreme mode mutation Meg where she's good at like 300 trophies because no one knows how to juke and no one knows how to like run away from a Meg. So you do a lot of damage. But at high trophies or high rank, Meg honestly sucks. So C tier is where we're going to put her for now, but I would like to play Meg a little bit more to understand where to put her. Now we have Ruffs, and Ruffs is going to go into the D tier. He's just not very good right now. I'm patiently awaiting his hypercharge. I'm not going to complain about Ruffs being buffed until I see his hypercharge, because if he does get a good hypercharge, I know he's going to be good. Next up, Gale, and you guys could probably guess Gale is going to go into the A tier. Gale is really strong. The super is really good. Both star powers are really good. The gadgets kind of suck. Like the jump gadget does have its uses. And the Tornado Gadget, again, has its uses. But none of them are really game-changing. None of them really help Gale out that much when it comes to just interaction-based attacks. So I'm going to leave him A tier, but, like, I could low-key see, fa see Gale falling off soon. Now we have Brock, and Brock is going to go into the C tier. Good Heist Brawler, good Bounty Brawler, and good Knockout Brawler. But again, there's better Snipers, and there's better Damage Dealers. So out of respect for Brock and the fact that he's good at low trophies, we're going to put him C, but he could very easily even be D. Now we have B, and B feels the exact same C tier. B is probably the best anti-tank range brawler. The slow is really good, the gadgets are both really good, and the 4k shot is obviously really good. So B does deserve C tier, but B sucks into other range brawlers, B sucks into mid-range brawlers, and honestly, I feel like you have to be a really good B and hit a lot of shots for B to be useful right now. Next up, we have Daryl, and we spoke about Bro earlier, but he is going to be our best tank in the game right now, and he's going to get S tier. Again, it's really scary how a lot of these best brawlers in the games honestly don't have hypercharges. But we're just going to have to see where that takes us. Daryl's insane on literally every single mode. There's not a single mode in the game right now that Daryl is not good on. And Daryl is going to be played all the time at World Finals. And I'm very excited to see what people can do with this double rule. Now we have Jackie. And I used to love Jackie. I used to think Jackie was good. But Jackie's going to be D tier. She just fell off. She's not a good tank. She literally has zero range. Like, she literally has zero range. Um, and she's just not good right now. She definitely needs a buff on that speed gadget to help her get closer to enemies or some type of HP buff to help her get closer because she just can't get near anybody right now. And now we have Draco and Draco like low key guys is B tier. Like Draco is very dangerous. He's very hard to kill in that Draco form because all you got to do is run around being fast with that just shot that you can't miss. And Draco fell off when... Frank was A tier because there was just nothing you can do and Frank was being played everywhere. But now that Frank fell off a little bit, Draco is becoming a little bit better. And I honestly think Draco might creep back into the meta. Now we have Pearl. And Pearl is a very well-rounded brawler. She's going to be B tier. She's very good as a safe brawler. So if you like get your shield up, you get your charge up, and you have super... Brawlers cannot push into you because you do way too much damage, you have way too much HP, and you have that super, which although it is useless, completely blows up everyone who's in your range. So Pearl's actually really good, really safe, and B tier for now. Next we have Lola, and I might be hating a little bit with this, but we're going to put D tier for Lola. I would like to see Lola get some type of buff or some type of hypercharge because... She just kind of feels like a low damage Colt right now. It's like a Colt that can hit shots easier, but at the same time, it's not as rewarding at all. And although the clone is really good, it's also not like a game changing super. So I would really like to see something done to Lola. Now we have Stu and Stu we're actually going to put into C tier. Now this is weird. This is really weird for Stu because Stu is always S, A, or B. 
and this might be a little bit of a controversial placement, but I'm okay with being a little bit controversial if it means that when everyone moves Stu to C, I could be like, yeah, I did that first. The speed turret is really good for knockout. Don't get me wrong. Absolutely very good. And Stu's wall breaks are very good, specifically in like Brawl Ball. But outside of those two things, what is Stu really actually good at right now? Look at all these brawlers that are S tier. Stu is not good into Mo, not good into Kenji, does not have enough damage to deal with Byron healing comps, is not the best into Amber, is not the best into Daryl, although yes, you can like dash away from Daryl, you can't really kill a Daryl too fast. Not that great into RT, especially the mini form. Not that great into Angelo. I'll give you credit, Stu is good into Rico. Stu is not good into Max. Stu is not good into Larry. Stu is not good into Buster. Stu is not, he's okay into Buster. I mean, into Barley. Not good into Tara. Not good into Crow. Not good into Frank. Not really that good into Penny. Like, you guys see where I'm going with here. Like, Stu, yeah, you could be like, actually, I think Stu is good into this brawler. And sure, I believe you. But Stu just, he fell off. He's not that good right now. He doesn't do enough damage, and we need that hypercharge to come out or for him to become a little bit more dynamic. Next, we have Willow, and Willow is just a criminally underrated brawler. Willow's always been B tier, and no one likes Willow, so nobody plays Willow. But Willow's just a thrower who counters tanks. So how do you, you know what I mean? How do you really defeat that? Like, no one likes Willow because she's just annoying and kind of good at everything, but not great at anything. But yeah, B tier for Willow. She's really good. Next up, we have Surge, and Surge is going to go into the S tier 100%. Surge is probably the greatest anti-tank we have in the game right now. The fact that you have a jump, the fact that both those gadgets are really good, and both those star power, well, not both the star powers, really only the one that keeps you level 2. But both gadgets are really good, and you have a jump, and the hypercharge is insane. You counter every single tank super hard, and every single assassin super hard. So if you ever want to counter a tank, just go Surge and you're fine. Last but not least, we have Nani and Nani's gonna sneak into the bottom of B tier. She's just really good against all the range brawlers, which makes her really good in bounty and really good in knockout. So we're gonna give Nani some respect and put her into the B tier. Let me know how you guys feel about my tier list. I know people are going to complain. I know people are going to like it. I would like to hear all of your opinions. So let me know in the comment section below. This is the meta that Worlds is gonna be played on. And to be honest, I think it's a really good meta. I think it's really even. And I don't think there's too many useless brawlers outside of the D tier. So. I'm pretty happy with this metaphor worlds. I hope you guys are too. Let me know what you guys think in the comment section below. I will be back again later.